to SRGN. I am Rob Bernanski coming to you tonight. And if all of this looks familiar to you, it's probably because you've seen SGN with John Krasinski on YouTube, where he releases a new video every Sunday night talking about good things that people are doing to help each other get through the coronavirus crisis. And I have to say, we're big fans of that show, and we enjoy watching that and seeing the ways that people are coming together to help each other out during this difficult time. But the phrase good news is especially significant to us as Christians because good news speaks to us of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God. And so a few weeks ago, we asked you to send us some videos where you shared that really good news found in God's word with us. And in this video, we're going to share your videos with the world. First, we're going to go out to Peoria and hear some really good news from Andy and Caleb. Hey, this is uh, the Holloways, Caleb and Andy. I wanted to uh, just share Jeremiah ten twenty three with you guys. It's one of the verses that encourages us. It says that I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. It is not for man to direct his steps. And this verse has always been an encouragement to me during difficult times, trials, tribulations, knowing that we can lean on God and he is the one that directs our steps. And we, we try to plan and we try to be in control, but ultimately God is in control and our lives are not our own. And that gives us great comfort when there are unpredictable and difficult times in this world, like the one we're in now, and when we're trying to make decisions. So I'm thankful and I know, oh Lord, that my life, Caleb's life, our family's life, it's not, uh, they're not our own. So hope that is an encouragement to you and uh, look forward to worshiping with everyone again soon. Well, thank you, Andy and Caleb from Peoria for that encouraging word from the book of Jeremiah. That is some real good news. Another thing we see from that video is the cuteness factor of having a kid in the video. Kids just make everything adorable. Speaking of kids, let's go ahead and hear now from John in Glendale. My verse is Psalms 56, three through four. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise it. God, I trust, and I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And why it's my verse is because it helps me not be, it helps me not, be not afraid at night. Well, thank you, John, for that really good news from the book of Psalms and the reminder that there is a lot more in the world to be afraid of than just coronavirus. Monsters under the bed, dark at night, another sequel to the movie Frozen, but we don't have to be afraid of any of those things because we can put our trust in the Lord. Now, we're gonna go back out to Peoria. We have an entire family that wants to share some really good news with us. Aunts, uncles, grandparents, nephews, the whole family coming to you from Peoria from the book of Philippians. Philippians 4, four through seven. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let you request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, thank you to that family from Peoria for sending us that great reminder of some real good news from the book of Philippians. There is something special about really good news walking at you right through a front lawn sprinkler system. Speaking of sprinklers, here in Arizona, you don't have flowers if you don't have sprinklers. And in this next video that comes to you from Phoenix, we're gonna learn about how Jesus cares for us through a lesson he taught using some flowers. And thinking about where I find my encouragement in the bad times, scary times, and even the good times of life, I find it in God, in Jesus Christ, in his word. So I ask you to consider, as Luke asks us to in Luke 12, consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not work or make their own clothes. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. And in this truth that God is taking care of us, James 1, 12, 12 tells us, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And then David, he is so encouraging. 
to point out the truth of every day when he says in Psalm 118, 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That would be every day, even days under quarantine or days when we're with crowds of people. May you find your encouragement in all that Christ has for all of us. You know, some people are just overachievers. We asked you to send us one encouraging verse, and that dear lady sent us three. And all I can say is, thanks, Mom. And now, we're going to go back to Glendale and hear from the book of Ecclesiastes some real good news about time. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 5. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. And this verse is an encouragement to me because it's a constant reminder that there's a season and a time for everything, even including a worldwide pandemic, but God's in control over it all and it won't last forever. We see that there is a time for everything. There's a time for a pandemic and there is a time for the pandemic to end and for us to all come back together again in worship. And we can't wait for that to happen. We are so excited to get everybody back together to worship and fellowship here at Desert Hills. And we're so excited. We just want to make sure that everything is perfect and everything is ready for whatever that Sunday comes. So we better do a quick sanctuary check. David, how's the sanctuary looking? Looks, uh... Pretty good. Yeah. Thank you, David. That was a very helpful and insightful sanctuary check. We appreciate it. It looks like things are coming along and we will be ready to meet, hopefully sooner rather than later. But in the meantime, we've got a couple from Phoenix that wants to share some encouraging verses with you. First up is a passage from Psalm 66 as we learn that even in a pandemic, we can still grow. Hey Desert Hills family, we're Jared and Michelle Rutledge and we are grateful to take a moment or two of your time just to go over a couple passages that have really encouraged us throughout this time. My passage comes from Psalm 66 and it just reminded me of the importance of praising the Lord at all times and making his praise glorious. And one way that we can do this is by remembering his awesome works and what he has done for us in the past as well as the present. And verses 10 through 12 are particularly appropriate for times like this that we're currently in. It says, For you have tried us, O God. You have refined us as silver is refined. You have brought us into the net. You have laid an oppressive burden upon our loins. You made men ride over our heads, and we went through fire and through water. Yet you brought us into a place of abundance. What a wonderful promise that even though as God's children, he uses these things in our lives to uh, you know, refine us, whether that's trials of water, fire, pandemics, whatever the case, God is ultimately going to bring us to a place of abundance, whether that's now or in the life to come. Excellent, Jared. Excellent reminder that trials lead to a place of abundance, and we can look forward to seeing what God is doing in our lives through this pandemic. And because trials lead to abundance, we have an encouraging reminder from the book of Philippians again, about why we shouldn't complain. And the passage I'd like to share that's just been uh, an encouragement to me, especially over the last couple weeks, comes from Philippians chapter 2, after the piece uh, talking about Christ's humility. It goes into verse 14. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, amongst whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. So it's just been encouragement, especially just considering everything going on and whether we agree with it or not, we don't have to complain or argue about it, um, which I might be inclined to do at times. Um, but just to remember to shine as lights. And in light of eternity, that is the most important thing in the midst of this time when people really need a lot of encouragement and um, and just love. So it's really just spoken to me in that respect. Um, 
and been helpful in talking about things with my kids and with friends. So I just wanted to share that piece. Well, thank you, Michelle. That is a great reminder. That is some real good news because I know that I personally have been tempted to complain throughout the pandemic quite a bit. And it's a great reminder that God not only wants us not to complain, but that he is at work in us and giving us the strength to be obedient. And now you're going to get one of the cutest reminders to love one another that you have ever seen as we wrap up with this last video on some real good news. Okay, Ephesians 5, 2. And walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Why is that your favorite? It's because it, I, I like it because it's telling us to love others as Christ has loved us. Well, there you have it, the last video on the Some Real Good News Network. The good news that God has loved us in His Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith, by His grace, He has called us to go out and love one another. So as we persevere through this pandemic, let me remind you of this encouraging real good news. God has loved us in Christ, and we are called to love one another. Well, that's been it. Thanks for watching some real good news. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks to everybody who sent videos in. My name is Robert Ansky. And one final request, John Krasinski, please don't sue us. Oh, okay. Sometimes I can't read my own handwriting.